A little bit. It's gonna be once this fat ass is caught. Okay, we're good. Hi, I'm Rob Dom. Welcome to the beginning of our daily video series. Right now we have a problem that every rotary owner has and that is a lot of heat, too much heat. Rotaries produce an insane amount of heat both in their cooling system and their oil system. We got the oil system all figured out, thanks to Holly, but we are going to revamp the cooling system for endurance. Because I only last about 30 seconds. <laughs> the car and I are a lot alike in the way that it, we both last about 30 seconds before it gets too hot. And then I have to shut it down and make tons of excuses and there's crying involved, we all, we all know that. We're going the distance, we're going the long haul and it's very weird to me because we learned a lot actually from a local company, CSF. They're not a sponsor or anything like that, but we called them asking some questions. The common knowledge that I thought I had was more radiator, more radiator. More. They were basically saying, no, more fan, more heat extraction. And we have a couple solutions for getting the heat to the radiator faster, more frequently, and getting that heat out of the car. So this apl applies to almost every car out there, but when you're making a thousand horsepower, two thirds of that additionally is being turned into heat. I hate this setup. Today's a good day because I get to get rid of these horrible radiator mounts that I don't know who made. The ones that were flopping the radiator around all over the place. We're gonna cut off the end tanks and we're also gonna shorten it just so we can get it underneath the hood latch bar because he doesn't wanna do hood latches. He wants the OEM hood latch for whatever reason. I think he likes to finger it or whatever. But we're gonna get rid of this flap and we're gonna make this better than it ever was. We need to take about two or three rolls off of it. And so I'm just gonna cut it and re-weld it up, make new end tanks. Rob has a new fan shroud. I'm sure he'll tell you all the specs and how fast and CFM and the fly plane if he wanted it to. Cut down some inches. That's an inch. That's pretty cool. That's how that looks. A lot more water in that one. That tape would look a lot better, you know. I'm sure out of aluminum it looks a lot better too. A couple major changes have already happened, so we're cutting through this very quickly. And one of them is that we've moved the radiator up forward closer to the intercooler, making more space for the activities right here. <laughs> Those activities involve a lot of things that Isaiah and I unboxed last night. So it's what, three, four? I don't even know, I'm gonna ask what time it is in the morning, but this is how it goes when Isaiah and I are doing crazy shit together. We gotta unbox something kinda cool now. This is experimental. You have to tell them our problem, because there's a problem and a solution, and what yes. we think the solution is. Yes, the problem is Rotaries make heat, most engines do. It's a byproduct of making power, <laughs> if you guys don't know that. A third of your energy goes into power, two thirds of it goes into heat. Combustion engines are not efficient. We need to get rid of that heat. And so we were thinking thicker radiator, bigger radiator, but, but we're kind of being told that it's more so fans. So Isaiah, take it away. My boy, he went online and he was doing all his Googling and this, you know, air conditioned office and <laughs> having a, a grand old time. And he's like, yeah. Make it to this size, 15 inches, I think. Then it has a 15 inch one in stock. That's right. They weren't very nice on the phone, I'm not gonna lie. We don't care about the name right now. Yeah, yeah, we wanna show the product, see if the product's worthwhile. I was like, yeah, I want these big fans, they throw all this CFM and their power width management, power. <laughs> pulse width yeah, management. Pulse width, yeah, yeah, yeah sorry, it, it's late. The cool thing about these ones that I like was they have these little silicone things when you I knew up. you'd like that. When you're going fast enough, there's more air going through your radiator than your fans could actually push. So that's actually what happened with the four rotor and why the hood popped up. There's so much pressure being pushed through there. But so this kind of bypasses the fan. And oh, that's cool in that it's not just the open, it's like... Oh, I, whoa, I, that's, I guess yeah. I guess you even boxed it. So yeah, <laughs> that allows air to just go... But when the fan's on, it's creating a suction in here. So this is actually closed. So this is what Rob was really freaking out about. This actually controls. This is a PWM controller basically for the fans. It doesn't just go on off, it goes 0, 10, 20, 40, 90%. And that allows us to not shock the system and keep all our horsepower in check at our coils. Yeah, because this is like 65 amps to run both these fans. I think they're like 4,000 CFM total. So 65 amps for both those fans to run full. We want to basically have it running partially. Oh boy. It goes on there like that for the most part. Then the end tanks kind of fill up 
the rest of it. Oh, okay. We'll figure it out. We always do. This one is something Isaiah is going to absolutely love unboxing for two reasons. One, standardization, but two, boo boo boo. <laughs> what? <laughs> boo boo. I told them to go to FCP because they got a lifetime warranty on their stuff, and that's what I do for all my stock BMW parts. So if this ever goes out, um, we can just return it and they'll replace it. But uh, I'm not sure how it'll go. Yeah, I put this on my Mazda. What is it? It's a box. Obviously, we know what works and what doesn't work. So we need to put what works on the rest of the car. So that way, we don't be like, oh, is that the problem? Is that the problem? We know exactly. Okay, that's the problem. Standardizing what we put on the cars. And this worked really, 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 really well on the four-rotor. And we've gotten like five other people to buy these things. It's a baby turbo. <laughs> Water pump that you could uh, pulse with management. So that way, it doesn't just pop on and... You lose horsepower, shock your system. Between the fans and that, we should be able to give it a tons of flow, but only when we need to like purge the system or we're racing it on the track over and over again. That combo should really work well. OEM Mazda pump, it's driven by the belt. It, it goes fast because these things rev up fast, so you aerate your system. That's a problem with them. You can literally just let it sit there and it'll whatever speed we want it to cool down at. You'll notice the radiator get kind of hot. When you're cooling, you're sitting there with the car off, but it's not getting the heat out of the engine. It's just staying back there, and the radiators up here can't cool down. This lighting is good. This is kind of weird. It's currently, I think, four in the morning. Happy Fourth of July, everybody. I'm here by myself. Everyone's having a wonderful weekend. I got a bunch of things to get done because I'm the only one that could weld. Yeah, I got my mini turbo right there. I've just finished up this guy right here. My swirl pot for the cooling system. It's gonna come in there, it's gonna swirl, and it's gonna drain out, and then go to the radiator, kind of uh, exactly up to the four order. The pump in there, but see, this guy's gonna go like that. So that's where we're gonna fill. Right now, I'm debating on keeping this old fan shroud or the fan shroud that I guess came with it. It's not even old, I cut it up already to try to make it fit. I'm really, really, really debating making a new one. This, my friends, is uh, metal. We are going to use this to make a fan shroud because that little thin piece of shit fan shroud is a piece of shit, as simple as that. The problem is, uh, this is the top of the radiator over here. I have intercooler pipes that go through about right here. With that fan shroud, I can't get those intercooler pipes to bypass, so I had to make a smaller one. Rob didn't tell me, he was like, oh yeah, I knew we weren't gonna use that fan shroud, and I was like, if you would've told me that, I would've never bothered with it in the first place. But you guys know how males are. Let's just bend it. What are we doing? Well, we're cutting holes. So we have a badass air compressor, so this thing goes do you hear that difference? <laughs> I'm about to put it to use. Gave her the old jackhammer. <laughs> <laughs> this thing has been cutting through this thing like nothing. Gotta clean these little edges up for this thing. So life has a weird way of throwing you curveballs, but there's always a way to solve them, either by starting fresh, which is sometimes what we end up doing, but otherwise, taking a look at your current limitations. I want to ask you guys, what would be the problem with pulling from the top of the radiator? If you were gonna pull coolant from the top of the radiator, what's the problem? Three, two, one, okay. Most of your answers were probably wrong. Yes. Most people are like, oh, you know, that's the hot side or whatever. The problem is air. The top is obviously where air will rise to, and we do not wanna pull coolant from the top of here because that could cause air to go into the pump and then the pump spins and doesn't produce a vacuum. We're still gonna pull from the top of the radiator, but we have a quick little internal solution that most of you guys, if you didn't see this, would roast us for. The guys that know what's going on here, they would roast us for this if you just saw this in the car. So, Isaiah. This is actually now pulling from lower, almost below halfway inside the tank. The tank's still much larger, but we can pull from the top and it's actually sucking from the inside middle. If air begins to collect throughout, you know, weird reasons, you take the cap off and it collects air, so, you know, over time in here, that air is not going to affect the water pump. Fuck this thing. Grab <laughs> uh, it from the pump.
Damn, I haven't seen a radiator fit so easily. <laughs> <laughs> this is called peak efficiency. We were so busy wondering if we could, we didn't think about whether or not we should. I honestly thought doing all this would make it easier to pull this car. Apart. Oh no. This car was not like anything I've done. This is like, oh, you, you, could, you could fit that in there somehow. Uh, but then how are you gonna fit that in there? Mm -hmm. It was a challenge, okay? Next time just buy a brand new FD shell and we'll, we'll start there. If you have any cooling problems, bro, I genuinely don't know what to tell you. I'll quit. But I'm equally responsible. We're gonna find out that too much cooling means that it cavitates the air. We're gonna find out a new physics thing that occurs. <laughs> Dude, these Dash 20s, th these are strong. I, I don't know how I'm gonna finish this one. Oh, really? <laughs> but nothing is as strong as family. It is finally time for me to do what I do best, which is mess up the wiring. And I'll tell you what, uh, I'm gonna be honest, I'm gonna give you a real brutally honest uh, opinion of this cooling system. Not the fabricated part, but this whole, yeah, yeah, he's right under here. <laughs> now that Isaiah's gone, let me tell you how much it sucks. No, come, guys, come on closer. Come, let me tell you a little story with Uncle Rob. Um, I purchased this from Derail, Durali, and I'm gonna be honest with you, uh, I wasn't pleased when I called them. Transferred me to Texas support, and the guy was honestly kind of, a and so I was just like, hey, listen, you know, I, I really wanna film something with you guys. I, I don't ever ask for sponsorships, especially for moments like this. This product's not as impressive as I was thinking it would be. And in fact, it's actually set us back because of how underwhelming it is. Now, that is when you get it. I wanna show you, whenever you see a kit online, I will tell you when to steer clear from kits. Kits that include, brackets like this, and a ton of random ass bolts to let you try to bolt your shit to it. These are kits that are meant for any car, and that means that they will fit no car well. And I mean, I mean that. And then you look at, look at the type of electrical equipment that's included with this. If you see anybody use this style anymore, steer clear. You crimp it, and there is no strain relief. There's nothing that's stopping that thing from pulling out and just ripping off. And the worst part is, the way that they design this these are supposed to get really close to the aluminum fan shroud that they used to have. And then this whole thing's being held in in multiple ways. This is just a recipe for disaster. Thankfully, they include this kind of old archaic looking fuse. Let me grab that. This is, yet again, this is something else where I'm just like, oh, okay. Like this is the fuse, Whoa. the circuit breaker that they include with it. And I'm glad that they include one, but it's, it's just like, so much risk because what they're asking you to do is put this fucking grounding your car and battery non they don't want you fuse they in their instructions say don't fuse it this is the fuse and that's how close you are to almost certain death and burning your car down that is necessary but the the this is probably just something made by the cheapest bidder like that's horrible I'm sure it works well but like the risk for how, much, how many amps you're pulling through, because you're gonna be putting thick wire through this, so that fire is gonna be really hot. So, um, all that said, I'm sure the system actually works well, but then, I get, the reason I wanted to mention this now is, this is where it's, it gets kind of weird. So, this is not a heartbeat sensor, it is a temperature sensor. <laughs> doot, doot, doot. <laughs> Playing too much Call of Duty. In their instructions, they want you to put this on the cold side of your radiator. Now I get the idea that they want to do. They're saying that they want to control the temperature going into the car, but that requires you to start heating up too much to then, it, it, I, I'm not a huge fan of it. I want to know what's coming out of that engine and then before it goes back in, handle it. Because they're trying to say this is somehow more preventative. Um, I'm not sure I agree with that. Of course, coolant temperature doesn't rise that quickly, but, but this scares me that I'm just holding this on with 3M tape. It's not screwed in, it's not held in and you just set it on the side of your radiator. And so we, we'll put it somewhere like that, down low enough so that way it doesn't, you know, it's not reading air temperature if it's too high. But just simply, the concept of this scares the shit out of me. I'm gonna be brutally honest. Thankfully, they do include an override. Now the override button on this thing does not kick it to 100%. It kicks it to only 60%, which I'm sure is still a lot of CFM, but I bought 100, I want 100%. And so I, I have an override that I'm certainly gonna have the ECU say, hey, something's wrong. Say this thing falls off and the coolant temps start rising, kick on and override it. So that's, that's not even an option to me, that's a requirement. And I, I don't know, I, I'm hoping that the fact that their system has these two spall fans and that it's 
PWM, this little controller. That's why it's so expensive. I'm hoping it ends up being wonderful for the actual experience, but to be honest, I'm not even spoiled. I'm just straight up saying that if you buy that kit, beware that it's this level quality. At a minimum, this is exactly how it's gonna look, but with the shittier ones, if you buy this kit. This is four grounds. So there's the two grounds from one of each of the fans. There's the sensor ground, and then there's the power ground. I am running up to, this is fused for up to 65 amps on this line right here that's straddling between all these other lines. And it, this is just horrifying. Like I, I appreciate people attempting to do stuff like this, but this 65 amps between these two right here and I can short it out like that. It's horrible. Thankfully I have these special types. They're not there. You can buy these on Amazon. They're not expensive at all. This goes out to all of you. The worst wiring harness of all of my cars was never an engine harness. It was the wiring harness for the body on the three rotor. And I promised myself to do it right. This was all done so I could run 65 amps to this, 65 amps to this, hide it nice and tight up in here, and then have that be also the headlight pop-up, turn signals, running lights, as well as the high beams, low beams all over there. So that, that end gets terminated there. On this side, same thing, right? But I got a little bonus player here. This is for a little something something we put on the oil cooler over here. So at the end of this video, what I wanna show you guys is basically we will be able to have all of these things, the water pump, the dual spall fans, and this fan, boom, turn on, purge the system, almost like the Hellcat with the chiller sort of thing, kind of concept, and purge the heat from the car with a flip of a button. So that way, when we're waiting in line and you know, you're sitting there hurrying up to wait, Boom, we can cool the car back down to hopefully like 140 degrees, 150 degrees Fahrenheit to then haul ass. And when you're hauling ass, none of these things are turning on to maximum power because you're warming up through the run. So you get, you're, you get truly the most power. I just want to say I'm sorry, man to man, some woman, a uh, cat. I know you're watching. <laughs> I'm sorry. I wish I was a better man for all of you guys. I'm not that man this week. Most of the time I come through, but we're having situations like this that just keep on popping up like, I have small little baby pinholes that I haven't been able to find in the radio that are stopping us from uploading a cooling video. It will get better if Rob doesn't knock himself out on the wheel. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> pass out in the background. I, I want to apologize because we didn't get a video out today. But technically, our today, not your today. Um, sorry, East Coast guys. It's 2 p.m. You guys will watch this on the way to work or lunch or whatever. I want to take full responsibility. I've been sucking ass, I guess. Let's hope this pinhole is the last one. We have a little bit of technical difficulty, but that's okay. That's real time, and I think that's kind of the fun part of these daily videos. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hotwire the system to still show you the same end result of the video. Tomorrow's video will be the car running. Right now, I want you guys to hear the fans at only 60% throttle. That's a sign. That should be the override. I saw the fans move. I wanna give you guys the feeling we're getting, but we will be triumphant soon, but listen to this. This is supposed to be the override for the system. It sounds like the beginning of like, jump, jump, ah, like a record scratch. It's like a fucking joke. It's not me because I overrode everything and I'll show you this. To their little override right here. That's all you get. I could blow harder than that. Yeah, you have. Uh, <laughs> but. Here's what the fans are capable of. This is the all 65 starting up amps are gonna go through this wire. It's already getting a little rough, but listen to this. I can't look at that arc flash fan. That's with this much gap between uh, the intercooler and the, the radiator. So look at that gap. It reminds us of the, the four rotor. So that shows us these fans can flow. The small fans can flow, but this controller, I'm so bummed out. And, and I even looked at their instructions and you have to be over 12.6 volts. So heaven forbid your battery's at 80%, not 100%. We are currently at 14.7 and they're making this horrifying screeching noise. They're, uh, like if you put your hand behind it, it's not impressive. Not impressive at all. Joel even did that. I'm hoping their little sensor thing works or something. I don't know. I'm really bummed out. I'm really bummed out. I spent a lot of money on their product and, and my experience with this has been bad. Tomorrow's video, regardless of what, I'll just override their shit and just 
just crimp the wire straight to the uh, relay and call it a fucking day at this point and just deal with the shock to the system. But we will have coolant, we'll have everything else finished and for seventh day we're gonna give it our all.